We are pleased to introduce you to Navigate, representing Greece and our school, Athens College. Our team, Georga Kopoulou Christiana, Vambaka Hrisa, to Djaridi Amalia. Now stop, close your eyes and listen. Imagine yourself trying to cross a road like this. Imagine having to navigate simply by listening to the sounds of your environment. Imagine not knowing what street you're on, the color of the traffic light, or even where the shop you want to go to actually is. Now open your eyes. You see, reality doesn't differ a lot from this. What if I told you that over 2.2 billion people face these challenges every single day? Concurrently, about 1 in 30 Europeans experience sight loss, whilst approximately 12 million people in the US over the age of 40 are facing some kind of vision impairment. All this suggests that it is imperative to find a feasible solution to aid people with vision impairment, to feel part of our society and be able to navigate with ease, even in less accessible places. What did we do? Well, it is great that you ask. We created an app that provides users with the necessary tools to navigate. The whole project was guided by the following problem inquiry. Can we increase the autonomy of a person with visual impairment when navigating through the use of an AI integrated app? Here's a quick dive into what we did. We created Navigate, an AI integrated app that focuses on object detection via light capture. All programming was done using Swift. We started by gathering our data sets, both through the use of photos found on the internet, but also ones that we took at different times of the day to avoid bias. We even included a data sheet for the data sets, explaining the motivation, composition, collection process, cleaning and labeling in uses of all contexts. Then we trained our model with the help of Create ML. Proving its accuracy, our model has less than 0.1 log. After training our model, we imported it into our app and worked on the user interface. In short, Navigate recognizes the traffic light color. The traffic light is green. You can pass the road safely. The traffic light is red. Please wait. Area street. The street name of your location through the relevant signs as well as popular storefronts, including pharmacies. You are located at a pharmacy. Supermarkets. You are located at a supermarket. Cafes and kiosks. You are located at a kiosk. Additionally, it can read aisle labels at supermarkets, as well as the prices of products. Recognizing that people with visual impairment have difficulty in distinguishing money values since most currencies have equal dimension banknotes. We also added a feature that tells you what monetary value your banknote has so that you can pay with ease. This is a five euro banknote. This is a 10 euro banknote. Finally, aiming to increase our app accessibility, we included an immersive reader of all object detection results. But what about similar apps? Highlighting the originality of our idea when compared to similar pre-existing ones, we found out the apps in the internet differed a lot from ours. More specifically, they all require a stable internet connection, whilst they cost more than 40 euros for a lifetime su subscription. Additionally, their user interface included many buttons, making it hard for the visually impaired ones to utilize them. This table shows in detail the differences among the applications. As developers of Navigate, we're inclined to admit the existence of plenty of room for improvement. In fact, we have already brainstormed some ideas for the future. Firstly, we can make shopping even easier for users by introducing a universal code of supermarket products, such as by colors or specific barcodes. Furthermore, we could increase our app's usability by using relevant speech commands to perform specific tasks. We could even ameliorate our app's accessibility in different languages by using an optical character recognition model <laughs> that detects the words written in a specific color, like the picture below. Here's what Mr. Yaluris, president of the Federation of the Blind of Greece, had to say about, about our project societal impact. <laughs> Είμαστε πολύ πίσω σε σύγκριση με άλλες χώρες. Το να μπορεί κάποιος άνθρωπος με προβλήματα όρασης ε, να διαπιστώνει ε, τι, τι υπάρχει 
δίπλα του, στο δρόμο καθώς περπατάει, στο πεζοδρόμιο, ότι υπάρχει συγκεκριμένο μαγαζί, για παράδειγμα, ε, είναι όντως πολύ σημαντικό. Ε, θα βοηθήσει στην καθημερινότητα και στη βελτίωση της ιδιότητας της ζωής. We are really excited about what the future has in store for us, but for now, thank, thank you, you for, for your attention. attention. Really, really thank you for your presentation. It's really good. And um, as us judges, do you have some suggestions and comments? Yeah, this is very nice work. I'd like to understand a little bit better how some of the features work. So, for the uh, detecting the state of the traffic light, how does the system locate the traffic light in the image? Uh, so uh, we trained an object recognition uh, model by importing many photos uh, with our own data set. So we have around uh, 100 photos for the traffic lights. And by training the model, we did uh, 14,000 iterations and we got less than 0.1 loss. So we think it's a really accurate model. And when the user uses it, because we have imported um, this model into the app, uh, it detects the, the traffic light. Uh, it also had um, a box around the traffic light which showed the coordinates, but we thought that since uh, visually impaired people want a simple application with not many buttons or complicated interface, uh, we removed this box so that it's even simpler for the users. I see. So, so what was the object recognition network that you were using? Um, we we used uh, CreateML. So we did it with uh, Swift, uh, with Xcode, and then we used from the uh, developer tools uh, CreateML, and we uh, imported the photos and worked as I told you before. Uh, so you so you created this recognizer from scratch. You weren't using a pre-trained object recognizer like Tiny Yolo or. No, no, it was entirely our work, and uh, we collected the images. Um, we found some images on the internet because we also want this app to, like, uh, be able to be used from people from different um, countries. So we use like supermarkets or uh, different types of traffic lights from different countries. Uh, so that our app is efficient in different countries as well. Yeah, it was all it was all our work. So we took all the photos and we did the model training uh, on our own computers without using any like external object detection models. I see. So do you have separate separate models for the different tasks like a traffic light, tra traffic light recognition is one network and supermarket aisles is another network? Uh, it's actually one model. So we have all the object detection in a single model with six different classes. So each type of, for example, the red traffic light is one bucket, the green traffic light is another, and then each store is another bucket. So this is one model, but then there's also another model, the optical character recognition model, uh, which we use to detect uh, the street name of the location. So we have two models, but they are different types of models. Mm -hmm. So to recognize uh, a generic kiosk or a grocery store, how many training images do you think you would need? Um, we included like uh, 100 to 150 pictures per um, object, like 150 pay, uh, pictures for the kiosk uh, and for the pharmacies and all. Uh, we would like to add even more and uh, be able to, you know, travel to other countries in order to be able to take uh, different photos of different supermarkets, for example, because, you know, shops aren't the same uh, in Greece, let's say, as it is in Italy. Um, so we would like to do that, but because of COVID restrictions, that was not possible. So we just uh, remained, uh, we, we were restricted like at 100 photos or so. Are, are these uh, 100 photos of two different stores or 100 different uh, stores? Actually, we have uh, many different uh, stores. So we took from different places in Greece. 
Uh, and, and we have also nighttime photos. So we tried to be, to have as little bias as possible. So we took from many different angles, uh, different times of the day. Uh, we even uh, Create ML gives us the opportunity to have some augmentation. So uh, we use the photos and then, uh, for example, it automatically crop them uh, or change their rotation. So it works both on portrait mode and landscape mode. Mm -hmm. And your, your categories of stores, were you distinguishing one kind of store for another or just store from a cafe? Oh, no, uh, one store from another. So if it sees a building, it will say, uh, for example, that's a pharmacy or that's a supermarket or uh, that's a kiosk. And we want to add even more buildings. For example, we thought of adding banks or um, from our interview with Mr. Yaluris, he told us uh, the most important types of buildings he wants to see, he wants to be able to recognize as a visually impaired person. So in the future, we really hope we can add uh, more types of buildings. But, but there, there must be huge variation in the appearance of pharmacy. So how does your model recognize a pharmacy? Do you wanna say? <laughs> okay, so there's basically in all pharmacies, we noticed that uh, almost always, at least in Greece, there's a green cross. So we went to different places and there was always a green cross outside of the pharmacy, whether that was in the door or like it was hand up, yeah, or a sign, exactly. So um, we took many different appearances. For example, we saw stores that were circular or stores that had a more like uh, square uh, appearance. And we tried to add different types of uh, stores so that it could recognize. And um, of course it will have some error because the dat data set was uh, relatively small, but uh, we wanted to create the data set on our own uh, to increase the complexity and also discover on our own how we can utilize artificial intelligence. Uh, so we were able to include, include 100 to 150 photos per bucket, um, having as much diversity as we could. I see. Yeah, that's interesting about the Green Cross. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> so this is great. How did you learn all this stuff? You're, you're high school students? Yeah. <laughs> did you uh, learn this in school or outside of school? Outside of school. Yeah, outside of school, uh, we, are, we are together in a computer science team, but we do C++ at school, and that's where we met. And then, because we were all really interested, and we discovered this really big problem of uh, blind people not being able to see and actually feeling marginalized uh, from the society because they couldn't go out, especially due to the pandemic restrictions. So we figured out this problem and then we thought, how could we solve it? And since we all wanted to discover artificial intelligence, we worked with uh, YouTube tutorials and like one, like Christiana knew Swift. So she taught us how to write code and create the app because we wrote the whole app by ourselves. And we, we basically did a lot of research as far as uh, data sets were concerned because we had no idea um, how to do that. And um, it was surprising how many things we could learn from this research. You know? Yeah, we even uh, did some like online courses, um, at least as much uh, as we could. And um, we figured out about, for example, the data sheet for the data sets. Uh, we read a report from Microsoft, which explained why it's important. So we tried to also include this to eliminate bias because we think that as exciting as AI is, uh, it's really important to use artificial intelligence smartly, like uh, be careful with how we use data, who has data, and uh, also what its implications can be. Mm -hmm. It was very impressive. Yeah, very good. So, so uh, between the stage, you train your model with the pictures you took to the stage, you actually put it on app and somebody has used it on the street. Are there some challenges in the real use? Yeah, I mean, there were challenges uh, while integrating the, um, the train models to the code uh, and the 
optical character recognition uh, as well. So um, it took us uh, relatively some time to figure out how that goes. Um, what we finally made it. So, <laughs> but like for the user when they use it, uh, I think that one of the challenges that they would perhaps encounter and that we want to fix is um, right now the app is able to detect objects at a distance of about like uh, eight to ten meters. So that's relatively close. We want to increase this distance, uh, perhaps add even more uh, images from uh, a farther distance to the data set so that it can work with, let's say, up to 50 meters. So the user can have like more accessibility and it can also be more usable. Great, great thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so Very much. Nice. Yeah. Do, um, and do you get any last questions or comments for them? Or, or yeah, I think your 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 project is very very uh, uh, meaningful. The it uh, utilizes AI, and uh, from the design, obviously you consider the the impact, the societal impact, um, and. Uh, Apparently, you used a lot of the visual part uh, of the of the AI. It's it's uh, really impressive. Yeah. Thank really you so much. much. We really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, good. Right. Thank you. Do you got any question for us judges? Or... Um, actually, how can you like? see all these teams and be able to distinguish one. I think this is very difficult. <laughs> and are you tired? Like I would be like dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're actually the third presentation today. So um, oh, oh. <laughs> there, there are many presentations, but there are also many judges. No. Um, yeah. So we don't have to work too hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <nice. laughs> yeah. yeah sure. um it's all done so thank you for your participation yeah you later. very good yeah very good keep yeah. your good work oh. thank you so much, much. <laughs> bye, bye.